بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ بیلنس از اے پروگرام ور وی ٹرائی ٹو برنگ لائف اینڈ فیتھ ان ٹو اے اسٹیٹ آف الائنمنٹ سو دیٹ وی کین ڈسچارج آور ڈیوٹیز بوتھ ٹو آور کریٹر ایز ویل ایز ٹو آور فیلو ہیومن بینگس برنگنگ لائف اینڈ فیتھ ان ٹو ہارمنی ول انیویٹیبلی الاؤ ایز ٹو اچیو اے سینس آف بیلنس بوتھ فزیکلی اینڈ آن اے اسپریچوئل لیول انیبلنگ ایز ٹو لیڈ ہیلتھیئر مور فلفلنگ اینڈ ریوارڈنگ لائفس Every week on Balance, we will discuss those challenges that we come across in our daily lives and how we can address these issues in such a manner that is aligned with the teachings of Islam and enables us to achieve a spiritually healthy lifestyle. On today's program, we will explore avenues to improve our mental and emotional health. We will discuss those common negative emotions such as anger and anxiety. Our guests will share valuable advice on how we can not only identify these issues, but also strategies that we can all utilize to overcome them. Joining me today is my guest, Dr. Nazia Nigat Sahiba. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. You know, today's life is so fast paced. And on a day-to-day -day basis, it's difficult to find time to stop and take care of ourselves, our minds and our souls. And mental health is so closely linked with spiritual and physical health, yet we uh, pay very little attention to this aspect of our well-being. So let's start from the beginning. How is mental health defined? Mental health includes our social, emotional, and psychological well-being. In fact, it is, it is how we act and think and it also helps us determine how we make choices, how we react in a stressful situation. So sound mental health is very important in every stage of the life, starting from childhood to adolescence, adulthood and senior years. Mm -hmm. And you know, as you mentioned, sound mental health is so closely linked with spiritual and physical health. But when it comes to physical illnesses, as a society, as a culture, we tend to be more accommodating and understanding of physical illnesses. Mm -hmm. But when the term mental health comes, um, it seems as if we're uh, lacking some awareness or understanding. There is a stigma uh, around mental health illnesses. You know, whenever people hear that term, they tend to jump to crazy or unbalanced or unstable. Oh, um, and that, of course, It means that we're lacking the awareness and the understanding surrounding these issues. Exactly. I completely agree with you that we lack the awareness about the mental health. Mm -hmm. So mental health is being mindful of your triggers mm -hmm. and the things which makes you stressed, depressed or nervous. Mm -hmm. And mental health has a direct connection with our physical and spiritual health. Mm -hmm. So if we are not going to be mentally sound, it's going to affect how we pray mm -hmm. and how we do daily life activities. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to take away that stigma and better understand what mental health mm -hmm. means. Indeed, indeed. So let's start our discussion today with a very common nervous disorder that we have all experienced at one stage or another of our lives, which is anxiety. So firstly, what is it? Uh, anxiety, extreme apprehension, nervousness, It's a common response of human beings in response to a stressful situation. Mm -hmm. Anxiety means being fearful, stressed, or excessive worry. And we all have experienced the anxiety in certain mm -hmm. times of our life. Mm -hmm. And it can be helpful sometimes, like before writing an exam, mm -hmm. interview, public speaking. Mm -hmm. In fact, it helps us motivate mm -hmm. to prepare for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, when anxiety gets excessive, uh, chronic, and it happens on everyday life. Mm -hmm. And that's the point where it needs to be addressed and treated. Mm -hmm. And this whole thing ca is called anxiety disorder. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so how does one identify it? What are some common symptoms? Typically, who suffer from anxiety, they experience a range of symptoms. Some of them are excessive worry about their children, about work, school performance, financial issues, when there is no direct threat to it. Mm -hmm. And some people also experience their heart beating goes very fast. They feel short of breath, chest tightness, muscle gets really tight. Mm -hmm. And one common symptom is upset stomach. Mm -hmm. So these sound like very common you know, symptoms that we've probably all felt at some stage mm -hmm. or another. So it seems like it's a very individualized condition. 
are we able to treat it and if so, how? Yes, it's treatable and treatment typically it involves uh, prayer, meditation, lifestyle changes, psychotherapy or a talk therapy. And if none of them works, then we move towards the medication. Mm -hmm. okay, so, so we can start with simple techniques like relaxation techniques, deep breathing exercises, saying some Duru Sharif or saying Salat on time or Nawafil. Mm -hmm. In Quran, Allah says, when I get ill, it is He who restores me to health. Mm -hmm. So we should keep in our mind, whether it's a physical, mental, or spiritual illness, mm -hmm. we have to uh, turn towards Allah, a Shafi, mm -hmm. to get the, the healing, uh, healing. Yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. And other common things which we can do is affirming the positive self-talk. That plays a big role. Just mm -hmm. when you get anxious, you tell yourself, I'm okay, it's just mm -hmm. the anxiety. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get over with mm -hmm. it. Talking to a friend, whom you can trust, mm -hmm. because when it comes to the mental health, trust is a big issue, mm -hmm. whom you, who you can trust about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So whom you can trust and talking to that friend is very, also makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, just thinking about the present, rather worrying about the future, because mm -hmm. nobody can predict the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So these are the simple things mm -hmm. which we can introduce on, mm -hmm. in our lives to help mm -hmm. us. I think lifestyle also plays a very big role in controlling our stress and our anxiety levels. Um, and you know, we oftentimes see that as stress levels rise, people start to reach for that bag of chips or, or that ice cream and, and they go through what's called emotional eating, which of course we regret in the long run. Exactly. And lifestyle definitely plays a big role. It's not just our physical lifestyle, but our spiritual lifestyle too. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, saying Salat on time five times a day makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. And inter introducing exercise in our daily life mm -hmm. at least 30 minutes a day, mm -hmm. but we need to be consistent with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Changing our diet, like staying away from sugars, processed food, reducing the consumption of caffeine and soda, mm -hmm. and introducing the green le leafy vegetables and mm -hmm. fruits. Emotional eating is very common, but rather turning towards a bag of chips, we can eat some fruits or vegetables, mm -hmm. take blueberries, mm -hmm. bananas, mm -hmm. and these, these are the foods which can eat your stress away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good, Jazakallah for that, Dr. Nazia. Um, in 2016, during his Canada tour, Hazrat Khalifa Tun Masih Khamis, may Allah be his helper, was asked a question uh, by a Jamia student about depression and the reason for it. Mm -hmm. And in his answer, uh, Hazur, may Allah be his helper, uh, said that it is due to the increase in worldly desires, um, which is leading to uh, depression. And the solution is for people to go back and make a connection with Allah Almighty. Mm -hmm. So we are going to hear from Dr. Mariam Sahiba uh, about the topic of depression. Let's hear more information about this disorder from her. In medicine, there are diseases uh, that can be diagnosed through different blood tests and CT scans. Then there are many others that uh, don't leave much of a physical sign behind them. Depression is kind of one of the latter disease. It's a common medical condition affecting one in six individuals and it negatively affects uh, the way you feel, the way you act, and the way you uh, think. And symptoms can have a large variety. They can uh, include feeling sad, feeling guilty, worthless all the time, losing interest in the activities that you enjoyed before, uh, difficulty sleeping, difficulty concentrating, and then thoughts of death or even suicide and lack of appetite. And these symptoms must last for two weeks or more than that before we name it depression. What causes this kind of problem? So uh, researchers have tried to come up with a number of factors and they have found that there are a lot of things that increase risk of depression. If you have a family member with any kind of mental illness, you have, you're at high risk of having any mental illness or depression. If you're taking some medicines such as steroids or high dose vitamin A, that's used to treat serious acne, um, risk of depression gets higher. Then negative past experiences like conflicts within your family, within your friends, um, witnessing trauma, loss of a loved one, death of a loved one, social isolation, having a serious illness such as cancer, um, all of these things can increase risk of depression. Substance abuse is directly linked to depression. 
Uh, as a matter of fact, 30% of people who have uh, substance abuse issues also suffer from depression. So now, once, uh, now we have made the diagnosis of depression, what do we do about it in terms of treatment? So treatment is kind of um, a bag of tools. You pull out different tools at the same time to treat uh, depression effectively. There is psychotherapy in which you uh, devise different ways how to overcome the negative feelings by talking to a healthcare provider. Then there are uh, conventional treatments like electroconvulsive therapy, which is used for refractory depression. There are medicines um, also available, which can be antidepressants or mood stabilizers. Uh, now their efficacy has been questioned over several decades. Um, they do take a lot of time to work, like take sometimes many weeks before they start working, but once their level uh, is achieved in the bloodstream, then um, they do help uh, in de decreasing the uh, suicidal thoughts and increase functional outcomes. So they are effective. Uh, then people also question uh, how addictive are, are, are these medicines. They are not addictive in the same sense as alcohol is or narcotics are, but they do form certain type of dependence, which means that if you're taking an antidepressant, you can't just like say one day that I'm going to stop at cold turkey. You have to sit down with your healthcare provider and come up with a plan to slowly taper down the dose because uh, withdrawal symptoms can be very difficult to deal with. Now there are types of depression. There is major depressive disorder when you have symptoms most of the days of a week. Then there is persistent depressive disorder when symptoms can also last two years or even more than that. Then there is seasonal affective disorder when uh, people have symptoms in winter months only and it's related to reduced number of sunlight hours. There is bipolar depression and people in this kind of depression, they feel that they're floating between the floor and the ceiling. Um, they have periods when their mood is extremely cheerful and actually manic, um, but there are other periods when they are extremely depressed and don't want to do anything. Then there is peripartum depression, which is a very serious entity, and as the name indicates, it affects the mothers um, in the weeks and uh, months after they have given birth. And um, you can imagine that this kind of depression not only affects the new mother, but also her child. And if we don't recognize it in time and don't treat it in time, then the consequences could be quite serious for both of these people. As a society, uh, we don't talk about depression or other mental illnesses the same way we talk about um, physical illnesses. Um, if our loved one, our family member is suffering from depression, we want to hide it, we want to keep it a secret. Uh, we don't want to talk about it openly in public because it has a social stigma attached to it. We have this notion that these are uh, self-constructed thoughts that are in the brain of a person who is suffering and who can easily overcome them and um, they don't need any specific treatment or therapy, which is um, totally um, untrue and it's very sad uh, that uh, we have this kind of attitude. Um, proper recognition and acknowledgement of this disease with all its gravity and complication is very important. Young ad uh, adults are also affected by depression and they come up with symptoms like tummy aches and headaches all the time. So we have to take a step back and think that these symptoms are actually not hiding a serious mental illness behind them. So we have to be very vigilant. So as a society, as a uh, community, our first step, step is to acknowledge uh, this um, disease with its gravity and treat people who are suffering from such illnesses with respect, with the same amount of dignity and uh, empathy that they actually deserve. Welcome back. So let's turn our attention now to uh, another common negative emotion, uh, anger. Um, it affects all of us and most people, while being aware that it is an unpleasant uh, and negative emotion, sometimes find it hard to control it and overcome it. Mm -hmm. What is your advice? Anger is a completely normal human uh, response and emotion, but sometimes it gets very destructive and out of our control. Mm -hmm. So that's the point when I would say that anger is only one word away from danger. Mm -hmm. So it creates problems in our lives, at work, in our personal relationships, like it affects the whole quality of our life. Mm -hmm. So 
anybody who suffers from anger, they feel that as if they are at mercy of a very strong and unpredictable emotion mm -hmm. which they can't control. Mm -hmm. So how do you treat it? Is there a way to control it? Well, uh, fortunately, Islam has given us so much guidance in this regard mm -hmm. to help us to manage our negative emotions mm -hmm. and anger. Mm -hmm. There are so many examples, but here I'm going to mention two sayings of a holy prophet, peace be upon him. Mm -hmm. At one occasion, he saw two people get abusing each other. One of them got really furious and his face got really red. Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, said, I know a word, the saying of which he is going to get relaxed if he says it. If he says, I seek refuge with Allah from Satan, all of his anger will go away. Mm -hmm. So this is such a simple thing. Mm -hmm. And at another occasion, he said that anger comes from devil and devil is created from fire. And the only way to extinguish the fire is through water. Mm -hmm. So if any one of you get angry, he should perform ablution. Mm -hmm. So these are the few mm -hmm. examples. And I know that reciting Astaghfar and the Ruh Sharif abundantly will also help us achieve that balanced um, spiritual mood. Mm -hmm. The Promised Messiah says that, remember, wisdom and anger completely repel each other. Mm -hmm. And whoever is patient and displays a model of even-mindedness is given a light which freshly illuminates his senses, and then that light goes on to create more light. Mm -hmm. Since anger and fury darken the heart and mind, the darkness goes on to engender darkness. Yes, and also Khalifatul Masil Khamis, may Allah be his helper, has mentioned in one of his Friday sermon that we need to train our minds and rewire our brains mm -hmm. to, to be less reactive mm -hmm. to the things. Mm -hmm. It is difficult initially, mm -hmm. but it gets easier as we practice patience. Mm -hmm. And this is something which is also proven scientifically mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, we need to then realize that every emotion that we feel, we should take ownership of it. Exactly. We should recognize that we can control it. Mm -hmm. And that if we apply these strategies in our life, it can truly affect and impact our personalities for the better. Exactly, I completely Inshallah. agree. Inshallah. Um, you know, Hazur has, we've heard him many times, Hazur, may Allah be his helper, has advised us to smile. Uh, more and more and be kind to one another and that actually has an impact on our psyche and our well-being it actually does lead us to become happier mm -hmm. and uh, Hazrat Muslim anhu, has written that um, when one approaches Salat and wants to create that state uh, of mind where they are uh, humbled and weeping before Allah Ta'ala but if that person finds that they're unable to create that emotion, um, what they should do is outwardly make an effort to make that type of face uh, or expression that as if they are crying, as if they are about to cry. And then it automatically elicits those emotions from our inner self where that person is able to achieve that state of humility and weeping before uh, Allah Almighty. Um, what are some other ways? Yes, as I mentioned about the smile, so uh, there are so many other small things if we implement in our daily life that can help us to uh, take away these negative emotions, mm -hmm. like uh, let go of grudges, mm -hmm. uh, think well of others, be kind to others, mm -hmm. don't compare yourself with others, mm -hmm. and also be, be uh, thankful to what you have, mm -hmm. eat well, Exercise, exercise mm -hmm. plays a very big role. Mm -hmm. And people who get angry, they when they feel that their anger is escalating, mm -hmm. they should go for a brisk walk mm -hmm. or do something, uh, a physical activity which mm -hmm. they enjoy. Mm -hmm. And better communication is another key. Mm -hmm. So angry people, they usually uh, think and they jump to the conclusion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And most of the time those conclusions are very inaccurate. Mm -hmm. So. It's very important so if you're in a heated discussion, so you need to stop, mm -hmm. think through, don't say the first word which comes to your mind, mm -hmm. and then go slowly, mm -hmm. drink some water. Mm -hmm. And also we can learn some relaxation techniques, mm -hmm. deep breathing exercises, writing a journal. Mm -hmm. Yoga is a very popular concept nowadays to help with the mental illnesses. Mm -hmm. 
people who do yoga, they, they hear some instructions in a soothing voice that what to imagine, how to feel. And, uh, but in my opinion, recitation of the Quran serves the same guidance mm -hmm. for, the, for us. And people who do meditation, they say that they get such a big mental relaxation after that, that they are at peace for their everyday living. Mm -hmm. And Salat serves the same purpose. Mm -hmm. Like in Salat, we stand in front of Allah very humbly, just disconnecting ourselves, our brains from the worldly thoughts, mm -hmm. and which is the excellent way of attaining the inner peace and mental relaxation. Mm -hmm. And guidance and peace is, are the core values in Islam. Mm -hmm. To, the such, to such level mm -hmm. that uh, Salat is advised is needed five times a day. Mm -hmm. And so now we can safely say that uh, Muslims have been doing yoga for the last 1400 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yoga gives us a temporary solution, a mm -hmm. temporary relief. Mm -hmm. And however, Salat gives us a more permanent solution towards mm -hmm. achieve, achieving the inner peace. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you're um, performing the Salat more than once a day. Mm -hmm. You know, you have those prescribed intervals exactly. during the day at mm -hmm. which you're essentially meditating mm -hmm. um, and communicating with Allah Almighty and like you said, disconnecting with the world. Mm -hmm. um, that enables a person to have a balanced day exactly. every day. Every day, exactly. Right, exactly. absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, now I've heard of this strategy um, called behavioral therapy, mm -hmm. which is used to treat um, you know, these common nervous disorders or other mental health illnesses. What is... Yeah, in, in this behavioral therapy, which usually is called cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, in this usually people, they change the way how they think and behave to handle the stresses. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, usually it's a talk therapy in which the therapist helps them to handle their problems mm -hmm by just changing their attitude towards the things mm -hmm. which makes them nervous. Mm -hmm. And CBT is a very effective form of a therapy in uh, dealing with the mental health illnesses, especially when people uh, use those strategies in their daily life. Mm -hmm. Jazakallah for that, Dr. Nazia. Um, we have covered a lot of very good points today um, in our discussion, and we're almost at the end of our program. Any last thoughts? In the last, I just want to briefly discuss about a couple of things. The first thing, which is an integral part of the treatment if somebody is going through a mental health illness, is the family support. So those people who suffer from mental health illness, they can't get better if they don't have a good family health, a good support system. support system. Those people who suffer from the mental health illness, they take a long time to get better mm -hmm if they don't have a good support system or good family support. Mm -hmm. Say they need somebody to get through this difficult time. Fine, yeah. And also sometimes family is really needed and support is really needed in order to understand them mm -hmm. that these are the symptoms, that is what they're going through mm -hmm. because denial is very common when mm -hmm. it comes to mental health yes, illness, yes. especially the so social stigma. Mm -hmm. You get fearful that what if I'm going to tell somebody? So if you have a family support, they can be at Get peace. That confidence. Exactly, yeah. confidence and peace. Okay. To address the exactly, issues, yeah. that I can talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. And secondly, that if somebody has tried all the strategies which we have discussed and they still feel that they're not getting better, mm -hmm. it's out of their control because it does get out of control, mm -hmm. then they need to consult their doctor to get further help. Mm -hmm. It is very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jazakallah for that. Mm -hmm. Today, the world is suffering from anxieties, restlessness, frustrations, and depression. Without a doubt, the one major factor for this loss of peace in every shape and form is man's disconnection with Allah as -Salam, who is the real source and reservoir of peace. There is no peace because there is no personal connection with Allah. Allah Almighty says in the Holy Quran, it is in the remembrance of God that hearts find comfort. Allah Almighty has given us that ultimate solution to find true inner peace. May Allah Almighty enable us to follow his commandments so that we can achieve everlasting peace both in this life and in the hereafter. Amin Allahumma amin. Jazakumullah ta'ala wa asin al-jaza. And until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.